guys and dolls how are you all let me start by wishing you all a very happy new year welcome to 2023 in london i'm so so happy to be back walking london with you all again i hope you're all so so well i have missed you all <laughs> i hope you've had a really good start to the year now this rainy grizzly evening in january i am on piccadilly and we've still got our christmas lights up which is very very nice to see maybe they're doing this whole new fad for leaving them up until february the second candle mass i think it's called now today we're actually going to have a little stroll along here and i'm going to take you into london's oldest and possibly the uk's oldest bookshop which is called Hatchards and I'm really excited to go and show you inside there today and to teach you a little bit about their incredibly long history. Now I know YouTube is currently awash with videos about healthy lifestyles, healthy eating <laughs> and exercising but I reckon in January it is also very very important to exercise your minds so what's better on grisly damp January days than having a browse in a bookshop and picking up something perfect to exercise your mind. <laughs> now here we are at Hatchards. So Hatchards began its life just down the road there at number 173 Piccadilly and that opened in 1797 and it has been here at number 187 since 1801 and you might just notice on the corner there it has a pretty spectacular neighbour that down there is of course Fortnum and Masons so they have been neighbours for an incredibly long time and rather poetically they are neighbours also at St Pancras International where Hatchards opened Baby Hatch in 2014 so that's rather poetic isn't it i think that's lovely they make a rather charming couple now you might also notice i'm just going to wiggle up a little bit that above the door there we have a royal warrant hatchards has three royal warrants it has one from our late queen elizabeth ii it has one from her husband, the Duke of Edinburgh, and it has one from our current King, Charles III. And while I'm talking royalty, today in the UK was the release of the biography of a certain prince. <laughs> but um, I'm sure we'll see some copies of that while we're in there. Now, one of Hatchard's very first customers was Queen Charlotte, who was the wife of George III. She popped in and bought a three volume, rather splendid copy of Le Histoire de France. Shall we have a little butcher's in the windows? I'll take you over. I know how you guys like a window display. I do too, <laughs> especially where books are concerned. Now inside Hatchards you'll obviously find the very best of the new, but you'll also find special editions, first editions, signed editions, and you can obviously order in anything they don't have on their shelves. These include currently in print books, but they also include um, out of print editions. Look at that, isn't that stunner? love the way that's set up and there's even a little pretty cat asleep on the gorgeous chair is that captain's chair love those i want those to go to my desk don't you think that look fabulous <laughs> so you can obviously have those sourced for you by hatchard's very clever cool. booksellers <laughs> Ooh. way they do this information framed to showcase a particular book hatchards also have signings very very regularly there was one here the other week um i don't know if you know giles brandreth he's very very funny he appears on gogglebox quite a lot but he's just released a brilliant biography of our late queen which i'm hoping to pick up at some point i wonder if there's any signed editions in here left very pretty we'll pop over to the other window before we nip inside shall we what have we got here 
Oh, we've got some Valentine's displays. <gasps> Look at this copy of the New Yorker. I might be a bit rusty with my filming, guys. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'll try and pick up the standard, shall I? Yeah. You can pause that if you'd like to have a little bit of a read on the doors here. We have a list of upcoming events. Hatchard always has something going on. There you go, exclusive signed edition. Told you so. And look at these. So those are some rather special editions. And look at Madeline. Madeline in London. I might have to get that. It's gorgeous. There we go. So we shall pop inside. Inside Hatchards. We're going to have a lovely browse today, guys. We're going to go to every single floor. On the ground floor here, you're going to find all of the latest releases, the chart, book chart, as well as history. And I believe we've also got this little gift shop here where you can get all the loads of good cards. Look. tote bag that's gorgeous and I think they're more than a gold seasonal gifts we've got some games here we go so here's our history so whilst we're perusing the ground floor let me tell you a little bit about Hatchard's very interesting history it all began with a gentleman called John Hatchard and he began as an apprentice in a little shop of a man called Mr Ginger and that shop was just behind Westminster Abbey and after that he moved on to a coffee shop publisher bookshop of a gentleman called Thomas Paine and whilst there he forged many many links with some pretty powerful men including the Duke of Wellington and Politico's Disraeli, Canning and Gladstone. But he really wanted his own business so he saw that Piccadilly had a load of rather large bookshops and he took over number 173 which was the bookshop of Mr White and he took it over and within four years it was the largest retail bookshop in London so as you can see there is an incredible amount of history books in here with a heavy focus towards the royal family which you'd expect for a shop with three royal warrants. Now originally John Hatchard formed his bookshop out of a collection of memorabilia and books of a bookseller called Simon van der Burr and at first the Hatchard family lived above the shop it wasn't always so many levels and then as it began to thrive they moved out to Clapham. Look at that view, so pretty. Now up until the end of the Victorian era, Hatchards was very much a publisher as well as a bookshop and Hatchard actually published a number of political pamphlets. Good timing Amanda, look at all this politics here. <laughs> actually published um, political pamphlets and he started out with one that was called Reform or Ruin and he also published another of a series of pamphlets 
of William Wilberforce, who we know to be concerned with the ending of the slave trade. Two massive sections on Churchill. Speaking of which, I've just finished reading Churchill's only novel, which is Savrola, and I highly recommend it. London as much as I do. London history. Are you seeing anything that you may have read? Let me know in the comments. I'm always up for recommendations. Look at that gorgeous book on St James's. Wow. These are always a really good series. I have one of them on Chelsea for the man Putney and they have really really good got a lot of information in such a small book doing some shelving look at the print on the wall also keep your eyes out for these all the way around guys gorgeous little historical prints <laughs> yeah. I also really enjoy these nah travel over there, nature, lifestyle and photography. I'm going to show you all of these because I think they're brilliant quotes. <laughs> these are beautiful editions. in my bag of some books that I'm after for the new year. So I'll pop those up, see if I can find them. I'm really interested in Clementine Churchill, his wife. Oh, I love that. Look at that. And there she is, Clemmy. And I always love reading uh, the stuff he produced for Telegraph. I got a little book of a collection of those, that's pretty good. I want to read the Andrew Roberts one. I love trying to get biographies in hardback where possible. Is here. And a royal history. So, where should we go, guys? Up or down? Up or down? I think we'll go down first of all, where I'm expecting to find more biographies, um, travel, business, science, religion, and music. So, we'll pop down there. Look at this gorgeous shop. That's John Hatchard there. I'll show you him closer when we go up a level. 
let's just pop down here. Yeah, we've also got a click and collect desk here and the till point, and there's a war warrant behind the till. And there's a lift available, there you go. Got new non fiction. Look at this. That's the Majesty's, the Queen's one. Look at that. First time a modern edition. Look at all these. I can spy some Atwood, the Testaments. It's an excellent book if you like The Handmaid's Tale. Le Carre. I need to read Tinker Taylor because I haven't actually read it. I need to. Wow. <gasps> Aldous Huxley. Wow, is that a first edition? The Devils of London. Oh, wow. What I do. Hmm. There's a first edition of Philip Pullman there. Wow, Jean Paul Sartre. It's incredible. Elizabeth Taylor. Oh, sorry, sorry. I'm going to get out of people's way and we'll head downstairs, shall we? This gorgeous carpet. No, it's a queen mum. Bless her. So here we are, lower ground. Gorgeous spiral staircase. Now, to a large extent, I'll tell you a little bit more history while I'm browsing. The bookshops of 18th century London were the gentlemen's clubs of the day. And John Hatchard had created a space to attract intellectuals, writers, and thinkers. In 1804, a group of men, <laughs> they gathered at the back of the shop to meet up and have discussions, discuss articles that they'd written or read. And these men would eventually become what's known as the Royal Horticultural Society. Now opening of the shop, look at this. Huh. Opening of the shop um, coincided with a real upsurge in the popularity of poetry. And you had a lot of poets who frequented the shop, including Lord Byron himself. Now, when I was researching for this little video, I found a gorgeous little book that you can actually access online. So I'll leave the link below if you're interested in giving it a peruse yourself. This little book details the history of Hatchards, but it also shows you which books and notable works of fiction were published when in relation to Hatchard's history. So that's really, really interesting. And when you put them all together like that, you just get a real sense of how many books and well-known texts were published in the whole time Hatchards has been. It's quite incredible. It is gorgeously warm and cosy in here, guys. It's so nice to come to a bookshop when it's miserable outside. I love how cosy this is, and it feels like it warrens off everywhere. It's so nice to be in here. for letting me film me here today. They were very kind when I asked for permission. Oh, we've got some prints on the walls. Look at this one. <gasps> wow. Map of London. <laughs> Old map. These little postcards. So cute what we've got behind me. Wow. 
beautiful. Good choices for in the travel section. So here you have biography. I love a biography. And I think my most favourite one, probably an opportune, we'll come back here in a minute, <laughs> um, moment to say, I'm so sad to hear about Vivian Westwood, but her biography with Ian Kelly is pretty substantial and it's so detailed and it literally takes you back in time. It's amazing. I also need to read this one, which someone recommended to me the other day. Oh, look at Sinatra over there. Danny boy. This is so popular in the UK, that programme. My dad loves it. <laughs> Let's pop back here. Look at these. Amazing. Biography. Opera, dance, theatre, jazz, classical biography. Interesting. Wow. Oh, there's some more London books, guys. Oh, I'd like to read that. Oh, very good. How incredible. You're always going to find the most books about London in a proper London bookshop. <laughs> this is what's more amazing about a bookshop shopping online because you can browse properly whole book on blue plaques. <laughs> With Hidden London, I like to consult those a lot. UK travel. It is. Something tickling at the back of my mind that someone came and bought the Vivian Westwood once said there was no place like London, no place anywhere. Crosswords. I'm hopeless at crosswords. I take absolutely ages. <laughs> and I cheat. <laughs> Soothing. Oh, I think the carpets in here also have a story. I think the print was taken from one of Hatchard's first books that it acquired, and they had it specially made. Let's have a little look through here before we pop up to the first floor, shall we? Look, the birds of London. Rare books. Oh, look. If I wasn't filming, I'd be going a lot slower through these. 
But I'm just giving you an idea of the absolute glory. Look at that. Things that you can find in Hatch Arts. Nothing better for a rainy day. No. <laughs> yes, so Hatch Arts can source you. That's additions if you are after one in particular. Get in touch with them. They are incredibly helpful. Should we have a little look at pets? Top dogs. Oh wow, look at that. That's the one that's part of the Irish regiment, isn't it? The Irish wolfhound. He's really old, I think I read correctly. Oh, oh look. London's number one dog walking agency. I should get a job there. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't mind being a dog walker, you know. <laughs> Alfie always looks pretty happy after our walks. Lovely. So shall we head up to the first floor now, guys? I absolutely love every the way everything is displayed. It looks homey and welcoming. With the flowers. I don't think I showed you this bit, did I? This is all your travel again. Beautiful. So we will head up this gorgeous staircase, shall we? Uh, but I still think you'll get two. Yeah, but that's fine. You'll get one. There he is. There's the man himself, John Hatchard, looking out at his legacy, everything that he created. So we're going up. How do they keep these carpets so immaculate? So up here on the first floor, as you might have guessed, we've got fiction, crime, science fiction, poetry and literary criticism. So it would seem appropriate at this point to tell you <laughs> that this very bookshop was where Jane Austen purchased a copy of Anne Radcliffe's The Mysteries of Udolpho, which was the inspiration for Northanger Abbey which she wrote first, but wasn't published until later in her career. <laughs> Agatha! I love Agatha Christie. I've read quite a lot. I'm loving these new editions. I think they're relatively new, these covers that they brought out. I'm quite guilty of having a book and then when they bring out like an updated edition, <laughs> buying it because the covers are so good. I don't think there's anything wrong with enjoying a really good blooming book cover. <laughs> Should we go through there first? Let's head this way, I think. Classic fiction. These are always my favourite sections. I absolutely love these editions that they've bought out. I've got a couple of those. So pretty when you put them on your bookshelf. I'll tell you a bit more history, shall I, guys, while, we're, while you're browsing and having a look at the classics here. So in 1891, 35 years after John Hatchard's death, the Hatchard family decided to sell this wonderful shop. It was purchased by two former managers, which was lovely, a gentleman called Arthur Humphreys, who had arrived as an apprentice to the shop, and he became an assistant, but he also became a partner, and he was instrumental in the story of Hatchards until he retired in 1924. So he worked for the business for an incredibly long time, and he was very well loved. Also, I've read that there, 
at the welcome desk downstairs. You've had some pretty brilliant characters there. You've always left their mark on the store. So in 1909, oh, that classics. In 1909, the whole premises of Hatchard's was rebuilt with the three floors that we know today. We had offices in the upper stories, and a photographer's studio was built into the roof. an incredible amount of fiction. Guys, I got so many books for Christmas. Did you get some good stories? <laughs> I actually think that next Christmas Santa needs to put me a new bookcase on that sleigh <laughs> because they're currently encroaching onto the top of my desk. Which, don't get me wrong, looks really pretty. <laughs> But I need another bookcase. Or oh, one of them trolleys over there. <laughs> you know the ones that you get in libraries as well for shelving. That would look really cool. Just on the wall outside my bedroom. I'm really interested to know what you all enjoy reading. Leave me a comment below. Tell me what you're currently reading. Leave me some recommendations for things that you think I might like. magazine which went through a complete change in the 1920s that is my mastermind specialist subject <laughs> and I'm quite at home here I remember when I first um, went to uni you were given a big reading list and I went up to Wallstones at Euston where UCO is with my big long reading list that was such a good day I came home with three very heavy bags. Beautiful, fresh, pressed page books, all ready to be absorbed. Got some science fiction here. That is not my specialist subject. <laughs> Piccadilly, you can see the lights still up. Look at that there. Wow. Hardback crime is behind me. What are these here? Can I look? <laughs> There's a wolf. Oh, 
These are beautiful. It's just reminding me actually, this was Oscar Wilde's favourite bookshop. And downstairs is a table where he used to sign his books. And that's now known as Oscar's Table. Oh, look. Bette Davis visited us in 1987 to sign copies of this and that. Over the years, we have also been pleased to welcome many other stars of the silver screen. Ginger Rogers, Gloria Swanson, Lauren Buckle, Tony Curtis, Carl Neston and Audrey. It's wow, Anthony Hopkins. Wow. If you don't follow Anthony Hopkins on Instagram, I would recommend it. He's a very interesting chap. So that was pretty amazing. We're going to go and head up now to the second floor. Now, Hatchard was actually among the few booksellers to sell the limited number of Beatrix Potter's Peter Rabbit. 250 were privately printed. They were handwritten with black and white line drawings and a colour front space and Hatchard had them. Here's Harry. I was a little bit older when Harry Potter came out. I think I was in my second year at secondary school. But when I was younger, I was obsessed with um, Jill Murphy's The Worst Witch. Look at this London for children. How glorious. Oh, this was so popular. Look. There's that Madeline in London. I really like that. <laughs> I love children's books. I've still got all mine from childhood. I'm trying to get myself, like, a bookcase from the 1980s, which was when I was born, 1986, to put all my childhood fiction on. I don't think there's anything as magical when you're a little one than at a bookshop. When I was growing up, they were always at like the back of the store, and like really plush carpets, and you could like sit down, lie down on your tummy, pick things off the shelves, and have a good read. This is like young adult. I remember being in a bookshop when I was growing up and finding Anne Frank's diary and that is one of the most prominent, poignant things that I read through my childhood. Look at that. Shows the children's book department as it was in the late 1950s when it was there. So. Oh, the juvenile. <laughs> so cute. It looks quite library-like, doesn't it, with the shelving like that. I like that a lot. I had a brilliant um, time in libraries when I was growing up. Oh gosh, look guys. <laughs> Anybody in the UK remember these? <gasps> Cold sweat in revision guides. <laughs> well, here we go at Cookery. Yeah, I had a really good library when I was growing up. And they used to have um, story times. And it was the section of children was incredible. It had like a little dug out bit at the back and you could like go down the little steps. It was like a mini little amphitheatre. And they had the story times in there. 
and I'd always max out how many books <laughs> you could have on your library card and I'd do reading challenges and all sorts. Sorry, I've gone back on myself because I'm yakking. <laughs> Loads of you probably like cookery and I do like the look of a cookbook. They look lovely in my kitchen when they're not being used. <laughs> Guys, should we pop out there when we're finished and have a little look? How are we going? A little scoot around the cookery section. So I think we'll head up, shall we? It's Morph. I'm going to get that for my dad because I can never find him a card, and he loves Morph. <laughs> I'm going to. I'm remembering where I've seen things because I'm going to pop back after I finish filming this for you guys. Hang on. Winnie the Pooh. Oh. Look how beautiful these are. Look at that one. Oh. Here's Paddington. Here, look. I had these. These ones. They were in a little box. They came in a box. These are them, I think, what I had. Yeah, the you know what I had. I've still got them in their little case. Two cases. Oh, some of these covers are very familiar to me. That one, Peace at Last. What were your favourite books during childhood, guys? Tell me. I'd love to know. I mean, these are like pregnancy and childcare. Look, it's Dr. Seuss. <gasps> Mog! <laughs> I remember Mog. And oh my god, the tiger came to tea. I loved Miffy. I have all my Miffy little books. This is amazing. Obviously, Thomas the Tank, the Rev, the Hungry Caterpillar. It's a bit too modern for me. <laughs> Honey bones, look. That one, that's just classic, isn't it? I've got a friend who studies children's books. Rather cool research topic. <laughs> I love how they display this. This reminds me of the library I used to go to. You flick through the shelves like that. So approachable for children. This is beautiful shop. If I had little ones, I'd bring them here. Books for babies. Remember the little, like, little wooden books you had? Oh my god, I remember these. That one. And that one. Oh, I like the look of that one. I can 
hear the Fortnum's clock. <laughs> Up here on the third we have art and gardening. And I believe we'll find the fashion up here too. <laughs> so I'm just going to <clears throat> pop up here first of all. I suppose people are browsing in peace. Oh my gosh, I've arrived. So in 1956, Sir William Collins bought Hatchard on behalf of Collins, very, very famous Collins publishers. He loved Hatchard and said that he did purchase it to preserve it and to stop it being turned into a coffee shop. Um, the link between Hatchard and Collins lasted until 1990. Winston Churchill was a regular customer at Hatchard's <laughs> during the 1930s and 40s and before um, and he sometimes had to be gently nudged to pay <laughs> some money on his account. I'm going to have a good browse around here in a second. <laughs> okay, let's start here. They actually took over the building next door, number 188, in 1983, and in 1990 Hatchards became part of the Dillons Group. Photography. So it was during the 1990s that the shop went through its biggest refurb since 1908. And the Dillons Group became part of Waterstones in 1998. Now, that's probably these like signage and stuff is familiar to you, probably, because it's the same kind of signage that they use in Waterstones. Wow! <laughs> I love all these. I've looked, I've, um, used that used another one before. It's very, very good. Um, but uh, Waterstones wanted to keep all of the character of Hatchards intact, which I'm very, very grateful for because it's got a lot of individual character and tradition. Oh, this is iconic, this book. Grace Coddington, fashion editor. She was a model at Vogue. It's amazing. It's hard to get a hold of. So I'm surprised to see that just staring me in the face. This is all Vogue. It. Oh wow. Ah. I love this one here, Rebels. What we got here? Fashion quick. Wow. Why fashion matters. If you're into these kind of things, look up. The Thoughtful Dresser by Linda Grant. That is stunning. She was a Vogue writer. That's a non-fiction, but you could also check out her clothes on their backs. That's a work of fiction. I love Annie Leibovitz. She does some, some fantastic work for Vogue. Always, not always, but mainly to do with fantasy and fairy tale. It's my queen. <laughs> more than a bookshop. Okay. 
wild art. So Hatch House also has a rare and out of print department. Um, I would definitely show you that Hatch Art has sold antiquarian and second hand books in its past as well as the latest best sellers. And Hatch Art keeps an extensive range of first hand fine editions, including signed copies. Sorry! shelving for protection whilst it's here on its way to you. They offer an out of print book search and they can always <laughs> source a fine copy of whatever the customer desires. And look at all the wood, the wood paneling and the shelving. It's so beautiful. Charles also offers a subscription service, and you can have a consultation with an expert bookseller, and he or she will anoint you with an appropriate book each month. There are a number of subscription options, and they come in beautiful gift wrap right to your door. You can have a fiction subscriber, non-fiction, travellers, the mix subscribers, you can have non-fiction and fiction, artist and the children's. You can choose from hardback or paperback and prices start from £150. for me if I can find them I might be here a while you know <laughs> I'm quite happy <laughs> um, I just thought I'd tell you that Hatchards also has a twice a monthly podcast which often features writers talking about their new books as well as a plethora of other subjects so you might want to have a little listen to one of those wherever you get your podcasts and also hat charts offers a reward system for every 10 pound you spend you get a little stamp and for every 10 stamps you get 10 pound off your next purchase so that's pretty amazing i'm still finding loads of these to show you <laughs> incredible oh look at the little delivery oh, that's amazing for novelty don't you <laughs> historical fiction I'm a fan sometimes so guys I'm just going to have a little browse myself and I will see you downstairs so I had myself a beautiful browse across all the floors again after I finished giving you guys a little tour of London's oldest bookshop. I hope you enjoyed it. I added a few titles to my little books to be read journal that I like to take with me when I'm perusing bookshelves and I did actually buy a couple of things to add to my exploding shelves at home. So I'm happy with my purchases and I can't wait to read them. So now I'm just gonna head along Piccadilly. I'll show you the Fortnum's windows whilst I'm walking. So you can have a little bonus footage for today. These are really fun, aren't they? Look at the chocolate covered whisk. Or a food. What have we here? Mm. And hang on, there's one I really love up ahead. Okay. 
they're all getting ready for spring and here it is look at this guys you're going to love it look it's a gigantic teetering leaning tower of fortnum's cake <laughs> dripping chocolate how incredibly stunning is this wow made in piccadilly I'm loving that. I'm feeling rather peckish. <laughs> Look at this. Do they still have the beehives on the roof at Fortnum's? I think they do. And then I'll just show you a couple more. We'll have another trip to Fortnum's soon, guys. Maybe we'll go down into the lower ground see what we can find i'm also on the hunt for a new perfume so maybe you could come with me and see what i find I'm loving the gold teapot and the gold cup and saucer so cute right let's head along i'm gonna go and get my bus home it has been so much fun filming again today i have really missed doing it and i'm well and truly back in the swing so make sure you tune in to queenie of london again this time next week for more london with a londoner until i see you again lots of love from london queenie